I wasn't, wasn't quite, quite sure when I was asked to come and speak here, here but, but this is a very important topic. Okay. Uh, my organization, organization is called Porsche, Porsche and this other article uh, is Gender, gender Summit, where we bring scientists, scientists uh, gender scholars, policy makers, stakeholders in science to come and talk about evidence, why science could be more excellent than it actually assumes to be. So, uh, yes. So, so in, in that, in the, uh, Porsche, Porsche was created, created in uh, 2011, so, so we have been, been around for a very long time. Uh, no, 2001. 2001. 2011, we had a very important project. Uh, and, and so, so we, we have, have gone, gone through many phases of how, of the question, question how you bring more women into science, science okay? And, and we started with computing, computing and then and engineering, and, and the problem, problem uh, Remains. Remains. So, so this, this is, is a, a okay. So, so this, this is a, a issue for all te technological, technological uh, 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 pr uh, uh, fields, but, fields. It's, but not it's not a problem, problem for life, life sciences. sciences. It's, it's not, not a problem, problem for veterinary sciences. sciences. It's, it's not, not a problem, problem for medicine. medicine. It's, it's only a problem for technical technological fields. Uh, and and um, I, I think now is the time maybe to start thinking about this in a different way. And, and I, I think, think the, the fact, fact about the sustainability, sustainability being such an important issue now, it's, it's a very good opportunity to present uh, technological uh, careers, careers in the context, context of this uh, societal need. need. In, in 2010, 2010, we had a, a project, a European project. We I was at Imperial College, College. Uh, Imperial College. College very much male dominated, no, no social sciences, sciences, no psychology, and so on. Uh, we, and we got together a panel of 16 uh, science, science leaders, leaders from across Europe. Europe. They were vice directors, directors of universities in the different fields. fields. Uh, also, we invited uh, editor in chief of Nature, and we put in front of them empirical evidence that looked at the different studies from across different fields. And, and ask them, does gender matter to science? science. It was, was a project, they could have said yes or no, doesn't matter. matter. They had three sets of uh, uh, seminars, seminars, two day seminars. seminars. Uh, they, they didn't, didn't know anything about gender at that point, so, so everything, everything was learned. And uh, they, uh, to start with, with, there was, was a complete resistance, resistance to the idea that actually they should think about gender equality at all. Uh, uh, somehow, somehow, you know, you science, science is excellent anyway, anyway and, and uh, it's, it's really the fault of women that they don't want to be part of it. But, but after a while, what they noticed in, this, uh, in the, the studies that they looked at is that very often uh, researchers would don't acknowledge with the sex of the subjects that they were studying. So, so obviously, obviously important in health, in health but, but not, not only. only. In social sciences, in psychology, in behavior, behavior you really need to know who was that that you studied. So, so what they uh, concluded was that uh, science, science today has got, got more evidence for males and men than it has got for females and for women, and, and therefore research outcomes will be often of worse quality for women. And, you and, just, and I will show you examples of it in a minute. But, but for the first time, the a connection was made between the quality of science and equality in science. And not only did they come to this conclusion, they wrote a letter to the European Commission to say that the experience that they went through should be made available more widely because the evidence is overwhelming and, and there's, there's enough, enough expertise, expertise to, to make improvements. improvements. And, and so, so that's because uh, we, we then created the Gender Summit, summit which, which is now in the 23rd edition since 2011. So there's a big interest in it, and it operates in North America, America Latin America, America Africa, Africa, Asia Pacific, Pacific and Europe. Europe. So, so, what they, so basically what they notice is that every step of the research process, there are biases and gaps in knowledge. And, and then, then also, so, so traditionally, traditionally people were really concerned, concerned about those graphs, graphs yeah, participation in, in science. science. These figures here, there are more women studying in universities in Europe than men. 
So there's a big pool of talent out there, but this talent disappears. So, so at, at, at the po po uh, uh, with seniority, uh, fewer, fewer and fewer women, and then men obviously succeed. These, These are technological fields, so there's a different shape. shape. More, More women than men study life sciences and, and, and gain uh, PhDs. So it is just not possible that all those men here are as clever as all those women here. here. So this is statistically not possible and biologically not possible. So, so something, something is going, going on, and, and this something is standards, standards. Okay. okay? I came I across, across this uh, cartoon, and this is a, our, our standards, standards are very high. high. We, we even have, have high double, double standards. standards. So, so I'm just going to, we have we learned, learned a lot since then about, about what, what is happening along this, those phases of a, of a, of a, of a, a science career. career. So first, so first of all, of course, society is pretty much gendered. And uh, from, from around the age of six, six both boys and girls say that boys are more likely to be really, really clever. And 70% of people around the world believe that to be a scientist is to be a man. But you would think that scientists who are uh, trained to be objective and impartial are actually also uh, uh, biased. There was, there was a study at Yale University, University about 10 years ago where they gave for both women and men professors, professors in different fields an application for a job of a lab manager. manager. So, so this, this was exactly the same application. It just changed the name from John to Joanne or something like that. And, and you can see that both women and men professors preferred to employ the men not, Not only, only this, they offered him $4,000 more in salary and, 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 and mentoring support. I mean, I mean this, this, this study was pretty shocking, really, in a way that you, know, you would assume, assume that this will not happen in a, a highly intelligent people. So, so here's, here's another, another example of this kind of how the biases, biases and complicity in a bias uh, uh, occurs. For, for many years, a medical university in Tokyo manipulated, manipulated entrance exam scores for many years to keep the enrollment of women at 30%. What they were worried about, worried about is that they, they produce more female, female doctors and they all get pregnant, pregnant at the same time. It's obviously be a, a, a shock. So, uh, so, so we are now in a, uh, there was, there was, a, there was a, 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 a survey done by the Institute of Physics at the uh, Society of Chemistry, Chemistry where they asked their PhD students whether they intend to remain in research uh, after they complete. So the shocking thing here is if you look here for women, at the, in, in the, the first, first year, 72% say they wanted, they wanted to stay in research. research. By, By the third year, year it's only 37. 37. So, so what, what has happened, happened to them? them? What, what has happened to them is that they were exp uh, exposed, exposed to the culture, the culture of research, research. Okay, the, the culture, culture of uh, academic, academic research. research academic. Uh, uh, at, at the same, same time when this happened, happened Institute of Physics um, was, was visiting physics departments. departments. And, and um, just, just to see how people perceive the culture in the physics departments. departments. They, they talked talk to heads, heads of the departments and each level down, including to the students. There was, was complete denial that anything, anything was going wrong. wrong. But, but if, if you, you look, look at, at the figures, figures something, something must have been going wrong. wrong. But, but if, if you, you want, want to attract women to technological fields, fields just, just read this, this okay? Make, them, make, make sure, sure that the environment does not appear like, like you're continuously competing. competing. Make, make sure, sure that, that, you, that, that you don't uh, ignore people who are there, that they all feel like they're being included. included. There, there has, has to be work-life balance. balance. There, has there has to be some, some good career awareness. awareness. Um, um, do, do not, not overlook, overlook anybody. anybody. Uh, make, make sure that merit is being recognized. Women, women frequently, frequently are given things, things to do that have nothing to do with the research, research and they say, and they agree. Uh, so, so it's too, too much non-research stuff to do. Uh, 
allow for the changes of, of, of research problem, uh, make sure that the experiments are going well, job security, and allow for a family. So here it's quite important. For a while I was uh, helping an organization, organization called the Daphne Jackson Trust, um, uh, who are returning women two careers, well, men as well these days, but uh, two careers after, after a career break, usually for family reasons. And it's very, very successful. So if we allow for people to take a career break, to have a family, and then give them an opportunity to come back with some retraining, um, that could be one way to bring people into corrosion. <laughs> and also, the process already exists. It's very, the Daphne Jackson Trust has been around for I don't know, 20 years, so they are, that's, uh, and it works. The other thing that is happening is that, is that and this where bias occurs, is how people write recommendation letters. They write recommendation letters differently for a man than for a woman, and a woman or a man writes, writes it differently. And this was an examination of many, 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 many recommendation letters. That's for engineering and physics. That's for social sciences. Different wording, but the important thing is that in Terms that favor men, things like physicist, discoverer, idea creator, uh, he is a scientist, uh, technician. So the wording is different. And so even, again, this is, this is professionals who are writing recommendation letters. There was a study of a European Research Council grantees. Uh, they didn't look at uh, compare women and men, but they look at the patterns in, in the careers, and they use the uh, metaphor of a dance. You could fox through your career, you can waltz, but what is really rewarded is a very typical, a stereotypical career pattern. This is a league of European research universities. Basically, early success, steady progress, and that does not really happen to, to, uh, to women. To women yes. So, so there, there are many pathways, pathways to excellence, excellence but, but it's that, that one particular career uh, pattern, pattern that, that is being, the one that is being favored. favored. Um, and, and actually, actually now, now there's, there's uh, some work being done in Europe on trying, trying to change the narrative, narrative of a CV. So, so it actually does, it doesn't, doesn't just list publication, doesn't, doesn't just list all the degrees, degrees doesn't just list all the belong, belonging to different uh, professional, professional bodies, but also all the other skills and other capacities. So this is another one, interesting one. This is also data from a, a European Research Council. This is about membership of teams in life sciences, in uh, physics and engineering, and uh, social and humanities. And as, and as I, I said, said more women, women get PhDs in life sciences in Europe than men, so, so you would, okay, okay you expect this being here. here. But, but then, then if you see, it immediately drops, drops and the men, postdoc post level, uh, there, there are more, more men at, at that, at that, that level. level. And, and then, then, of course, at PI level. level. Um, so, so the, the important thing here is that it's the PI who chooses the team. Yes? So it is, and the PI, PI can, can choose where they do it, have, have the grant. Uh, so it's a, um, I couldn't get the data from, uh, to, to compare whether the women were less biased in the way that they invited, uh, whom they invited to the team to compare to men. But anyway, this, this, this is the important thing, that in, even in social sciences, so the pipeline, there's not a problem with the pipeline of the talent. It's just the problem is how decisions are made. If you're not invited to such an important project, like a European Research Council project, you're actually losing out because you're not connected then to very important networks and potential for collaboration. And this figure just shows how men are much more systematically more successful of getting grants from the European Research Council. There have been probably about 10 years old. 
but, but there have been, been some improvements, but, but it's still, still the case. case. This, this is an, an interesting, interesting one. one. This, 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 this study, study looked at the, uh, compared, compared the performance of a PhD student, student depending, depending if, if the student, student was male and, and the supervisor was male, male student was male, male supervisor was female, female, female. female. What, what it showed is that when a, a male student has got a female supervisor, he is much more productive, has better publications and better impact factor. The relationship also works for women, that is, women supervisor and a, a, a woman student. It does not work for men and men. And so one could try to find out why. Might be that actually women spend more time to with, with the students student, to try to, to come, come up uh, 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 with, with a, 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 a more, more, more ready to listen and uh, with any, uh, if, if there are any problems, problems with, uh, with, with the PhD. PhD. So, so there's something, something also, also positive, positive to be said about why it is important, important that and uh, valuable, valuable to have a diverse team. So the, 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 uh, Kevin Dunbar used, used to go to, to laboratories, laboratories and observe how people work. And, and when, when everything goes well with the experiment, there's no difference. difference. Women and men work the same way, way as, as you would expect, because in a, a lot of time goes into designing of a study. Uh, uh, when the, the difference do occur, occur is, is when something unexpectedly, unexpectedly goes wrong with the experiment. experiment. So, so then you can see that there are different attitudes, different responses. And, and it doesn't, doesn't mean that there's any, any, uh, one is better than the other. other. It, it just means, means that actually, there are, you really need different ways of looking at the problem. And, and to, to having, having the simplest way, way to have this diversity, diversity is to have, have a, a, at least a diversity, a diversity between for women and, and, and for men. And this, this is, is another one that... Uh, Shows, shows the importance of diverse teams. teams. So, so this is a study where they looked at the 192 uh, teams, teams and different, different proportions of men and, and women, and, and they, they found that actually, actually as the proportion of the, of the as, as the, gen the, the closer you came to the gender balance, balance the, the higher the collective, collective intelligence of the team. Of the team. And, and that, that means that uh, there, was there was a better, better communication, communication, there was, there was a less uh, uh, direction, uh, direction uh, there, was there was more openness to uh, uh, more openness to see different ways of uh, looking at the problem. Um, so that's positive. The other very interesting study was done by Harvard University. There's a something called Innocentive.com, where uh, companies who in do research and development uh, have a problem, they can announce the problem there. You can sign in as a problem solver. Uh, if your solution is uh, uh, chosen, you are paid. So it is kind of a, a, both women and men participate, more men than women, but that doesn't really matter this, uh, here. What matters here is that they found that actually there are two categories of uh, problem solvers that were successful. One was people who were outside the, the field itself. They, they brought, obviously brought some interdisciplinary understanding into the problem. But it was the women who were outside the establishment who produced the best solutions. So when we when we have the earlier, earlier uh, picture when the women are dropping out from uh, uh, academic careers, they are somewhere there. And they are really a, a, another pool of talent that can be brought into corrosion if uh, if, uh, prob uh, no, if, some, if there's some effort uh, taken in that direction. Okay. Um, so beyond the gender balance, we had all had COVID. We all learned that actually uh, epidemiology is not really was the solution to it. There were many social, economic, uh, political issues. Uh, we are now talking about having intersectional view about uh, about problems, so you cannot just talk about uh, one aspect, everything is interconnected, and there are lots of risks that have to be understood from a different perspective. So intersectionality, so we have a, we, originally we started with a gender 
balance gender equality, then it became about inclusion and diversity, and now it's about intersectionality. So here's an example that kind of covers all aspects of it. And it's kind of a holistic, maybe, or ecosystem point of view. Um, transport and mobility. The roads were designed for men because men used to drive, women didn't drive. The patterns of mobility differ between women and men. Men, men make longer distances and drive faster. Women make sh shorter distances and travel shorter, uh, 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 slower. So uh, the roads were not designed for this. You know, if you're a woman, you would have to take your mother to the doctor, your children to school, go and get to do some shopping, and then go to work, and so on. Uh, and, the, the, and the issue of the safety, until, until last year, all the crush test dummies were male dummies. They were designed mechanically to, for the body of a man and not for the woman. And, they, and so all the cars were tested on male crush test dummies. So, and when you compare then the uh, data from accidents, real world accidents, and the data for women and for men with the data from the labs for testing the cars, they did not compare. Okay. So basically, the, 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 risks, the, women, the risk for women in a car crash was much higher than for a, for a man. It was a study that looked at 20 years of data in America and concluded that women had a 47% higher risk of injury in a car crash than, than a man had. At the same time, in the, so people complain, say, oh, you know, oh, there were some old cars and new cars, so that wasn't really that relevant. But uh, there was a study that looked at, their, uh, at car crashes of cars designed after, uh, uh, produced after 2009. And what they found is that actually the newer vehicles were 55% better for than the older vehicles, but they uh, were worse for women than for men because men uh, drive fast, so the seat has been made to, be, to hold the body of a man really, really tightly, and there are three things that happen in a car crash. The car goes into the barrier, then your body goes into the inside, crashes on the inside, and then the third crash is all your organs. So it's like being on a trampoline. So women's vertebrae are a little bit more separated than men's. So it shakes like this, and, and the injuries are different. None of it is taken into account when prevention and, and reaction to the car crash is uh, uh, the standards for that. That's what you need to look like in order to be safe in a car crash. So. Um, Yes, it's obviously, seat belt, uh, not, uh, uh, not made for pregnant women. This is the very, very first female crush that is done. It actually bio biomechanically represents a woman's body. Okay, so I said we'll talk about intersectionality, a great deal of... Uh, Good, a good uh, uh, this novel way of looking at this has been done in Canada. Uh, this particular example comes from uh, this website. So they're looking at their workplace climate, the careers, and uh, the, the research issues. Um, it's so uh, this whole thing of our uh, gender and is becoming much more, much more interesting as a as a pro as a uh, problem. We have also now uh, institutional re reaction. So uh, House of Commons has produced this conclusions, a fifth report on diversity and inclusion in STEM. So someone was talking about political uh, commit, uh, uh, interest in that. So it's, uh, so it's here. The Lancet has been for a very long time supporting the uh, line of uh, medical research so to recognize uh, diversity and, uh, and non-discrimination and the decolonization of knowledge 
And then now we also have the UK Arise Equality, Diversity, and Inclusion Strategy. And uh, we are currently in this project, uh, which is a European project called Inspire, that is building a center of excellence on inclusive gender equality in research and innovation. We're also in a project, European project, on, uh, on, on uh, energy transitions, which is uh, you know, how you actually bring together enough talent and knowledge to achieve energy transition. Okay, so this is again this, but one, I just want to say something about research knowledge uh, and the, this, this, this thing that the, uh, the panel of the science leaders has noticed is this connection between gender equality and quality of research. So, okay, we're post-Brexit, so we don't have uh, access to Horizon Europe, but Horizon Europe now requires that every, pro every organization that receives money from Horizon Europe has to have a gender equality plan. And also that every project speaks about and explains the gender dimension. So German, German uh, Research Foundation has got a strategy. If you're producing, a, if you're submitting a proposal, they fund only excellent proposals. You have to talk about gender dimension. And there are, there are guidelines uh, about uh, how to explain it. Mainly, are you using some living subject or is your research going to impact on some living subject, objects? And uh, there's quite a lot of uh, advice now coming out about what it actually all means. It's pretty new to many people but it's uh, been talked about for about 10 years now. Um, someone mentioned sustainability. Here's a study that looked at the research that's done for sustainable development goals. SDG 7 here, 1% of studies have actually looked at gender, and yet, you know, it talks about uh, accessible, affordable, clean energy. So it's a very gendered concept. What's, what's afford affordable to some, it's not affordable to others. Uh, there's a great deal of opportunities there. Um, okay, so we're trying to kind of think everything is exposed to the environment, including biology, including us. Uh, everything is in a sort of social cultural interactions. This is one way of trying to look at this. I know that the kind of examples of uh, uh, corrosion that we've seen, this doesn't really immediately apply, but it will apply uh, whenever there is any relation to anything biological and health. So the evidence of sex and gender differences with age, uh, of social, all the inter intersectional aspects is huge. Um, and it, it's at many different levels, starts from the chromosomes, goes all the way to, the, to your lifespan. And so the, uh, this, is, this is significant when we might want to talk about toxicity of materials that are used to prevent corrosion. Um, I'm just looking there because you're really waving. I'm finished. This. Okay. Well, this kind of a corrosion was not discussed here, but it is about increasingly what, uh, implants. They do corrode. And, and it, there's a difference between women and men because the, the way that the, the immune system responds will be different for women and men. Uh, this one story about their, uh, the mesh surgery is just uh, shocking uh, how many women have actually suffered from that. Uh, I, have, uh, this, uh, I was inspired by the Dev Gear schema because you could then look at your corrosion Corrosion, yes, problems. Is it the, is the biological or environmental impact? Is it societal human impact? For many, like we've seen, it's no, so that's fine. That's not a problem. But in some, it will be yes, and some, it will be uh, both yes. Uh, so there was examples, I think, uh, in uh, 3D printing for custom-built implants. That's has got a biological not, not directly biological, environmental in, in impact, but does have a societal and human impact. So one could think about uh, the strategies that have been already developed by funders uh, to see how it applies to corrosion. 
And then that is a very significant here because it's about if it does if sex and gender do not apply, then the ethical uh, aspects apply because these things go out there into the world. And it is not just ethics in the research itself, but it's the ethics out there in, a, in, in, in society. Uh, and the other one is a responsible research and innovation. That's been a concept in Europe for quite a while now. And I think it would apply to coercion really well because of uh, it is about how, uh, uh, how, how science can demonstrate that it's not only excellent, but also and uh, sustainable and answers the needs of society. Okay, thank you. <laughs>